Hello, vibration, vibration angels and frequenciers. Welcome to the Sound Therapy Center of Los Angeles. I'm Wayne Perry, and uh, we're talking about a unique subject uh, today entitled Discovering Your Signature Frequency in Our Vibrational Universe. You know, we live in this vibration universe. They tell us, the new physics tells us, everything is frequency, sound, and vibration. And uh, I've learned from experience that this is very true. You know, Edgar Casey told us back in the 1950s that uh, sound will be the medicine of the future. And guess what? The future is now. So uh, we owe it to ourselves to really uh, try to understand the vibrational beings that we are. I mean, we are vibrational beings, you know, as they say, we are spiritual beings uh, living in the physical universe, the physical body, and that's all well and good, but the important thing to realize is that each person, each individual has their own unique signature frequency pattern that's unique to them. You know, no two people are alike, and when we uh, learn about our signature frequency pattern, it gives us great insights into who we are and uh, how to uh, manifest things in our life, how to take uh, more control over our uh, awareness and our uh, reality. So we're going to discuss some of the principles of sound therapy, vibrational healing, and uh, how you can discover your signature frequency. And it's very easy to do this, but it does require uh, you getting together with a you know, a licensed or certified sound healer. Uh, the good news is there's a lot more people embracing sound healing. When I started the Sound Therapy Center in 1992, in spring of 1992, over 25 years ago, it was kind of a, an uphill battle. Uh, the only clients I think I had were seniors that were fed up with allopathic medicine and weren't getting much benefit and were looking some, for some alternative uh, health and wellness or holistic uh, healing capabilities and so it was tough initially but because sound healing works and it's a very powerful holistic modality uh, I've built up you know my business over the last 25 years and you know I've got 12 CDs and you know two books videos a number of products and services here in Los Angeles and I also work over the telephone for people that are interested in uh, and uh, doing some sound work consultation or analysis. But I'll tell you the most important thing that I suggest that you do if you're interested in sound healing and you really want to identify your signature frequency because it's like a, you could say a vibrational fingerprint of who you are. And so your uh, signature frequency represents the sum total of all your body systems. So let me digress for a moment and explain like Every system, let's say your heart and circulatory system, is vibrating at a particular frequency that could be measured. Your uh, digestive system is vibrating at a particular frequency, and this can be measured. Your, uh, your respiratory system, your nervous system, uh, all the various systems and organs in your body are vibrating at a particular frequency. And the sum total of all of these organs and body systems represents your personal unique signature frequency. It takes into account all your uh, physical, uh, emotional, and psychological aspects and bodies, and it's uh, held in your brain. And if you look in the brainwave pattern, you can discover your signature frequency. But how do we look in the brainwave pattern? What's the easiest way to identify and look at our signature frequency in terms of, you know, standard logic and reason and, uh, you know, getting a visualization or an insight into our frequency. Well, since it's all contained in your brain, the brain is the home office in the body, uh, and, you know, scientists and doctors and people in new physics know that all this information uh, is energy and it's stored in your brain. But what many people don't know is it's also evident in your voice, that your voice reveals whatever is in your brain. And if it's not present in your brain, if it's dormant or not uh, present in your brainwave patterns, it will not be present in your voice. So this gives us a great tool because if it's present 
in your brainwave pattern and uh, you know in your brain then we can view that we can observe it in your voice and your vocal patterns because your voice uh, is a uh, uh, messenger so to speak you know it's it's sending uh, information not only audibly through the sound of the words and whatnot but uh, you know we think of the voice mainly in two contexts language and speaking and conveying information uh, and then in, we think of the voice in terms of putting that uh, maybe some more emotional creative contents into it and using the voice for singing or chanting and that's pretty much the extent that we look at the voice is just uh, speaking and language and singing and chanting but the third ingredient and the third third aspect of the voice is just as important as the others in fact perhaps more important because that's the ability of the voice to move energy now we don't think about this we kind of take it for granted but when you express your feelings through your voice like if you sigh <sighs> You know, it's an exp expulse of the prana, pranic uh, breath energy, and it's also a, uh, uh, a release, and there's a sound that accompanies it. And so that's one form of releasing sound with the voice and moving energy. Uh, another way of doing that would be moaning, groaning, laughing, crying. These are all ways that we use the voice to kind of communicate without words or without... Uh, you know, music, but just using the voice as an expression to release energy. It helps us to relax. It helps us to calm down. Uh, we get a lot off of our chest when we express our feelings or our emotions. And whether we do it consciously or unconsciously, you know, we sometimes take it for granted that the voice is there and we express these, uh, uh, not only our thoughts and feelings, but these sounds. You notice our voice raises when we get excited or emotional or angry or whatever the emotion might be. So these are all expressions of what I would put under the umbrella definition of toning. So many of you have heard of toning and perhaps have done or experienced toning. But in case you haven't, uh, the way I define toning is using the human voice to move energy without relying on speech, language, music, or chanting but on those other capabilities of the voice, using primarily vowel sounds, but not limiting it to vowel sounds. So it's primarily vowel sounds. That's the most powerful energy in the voice and in the body is the use of the vowel sounds and the harmonics and overtones that are within and between the vowels. And all this is a subtle thing to understand, but there's harmonics and overtones with within the vowels and between the vowels when we speak or sing or any use of the voice one of the things that I teach is vocal overtoning vocal harmonics how to consciously create these harmonics they're in your speaking voice naturally but we tend to speak so fast and put the the uh, focus on the words and the content of what we're saying we don't really think about the uh, uh, the other options of the voice or uh, think of its its complete value but it's a tremendous valuable tool to express these thoughts and feelings and express this energy and move energy with the human voice and that's what toning is so most people think of toning as making some sounds vowel sounds or whatever maybe for releasing or relaxing but it's actually more than that and in fact uh, when we learn to master toning and bring it to the next level of overtoning and vocal harmonics, we can move into the realm of healing and strengthening the overall health and wellness of the body. You know, we, we know, for instance, you know, we can observe, like when we make certain sounds, and like let's say you dropped a heavy weight on your foot or something. I mean, if it wasn't too heavy, you might go, ow. You know, you make this ow sound, but you know, it passes in a few seconds or so and we get on with our, our day. But if you drop something very heavy, like a, let's say a bowling ball or a safe or something that's very, very heavy, and we experience pain, when we drop that item on our foot, we're likely to go, ow, ah, ooh, something like that. The volume goes up, and we're using vowel sounds. So this is really important to understand. We, we, you know, we kind of take it for granted that the level of volume is dictated by 
kind of the level of pain. So we have a little pain, we might go, ah. And if we have a stronger pain, we might go, ow, and our voice raises. And if we have a really tremendous pain, we're in an auto accident or there's, you know, a, a very serious cut or pain that we have, we would really scream for an, maybe an extended period of time at a loud volume. So just looking at this analogy shows us how we get a certain amount of relief from moving that energy with the voice because we're releasing pain. One of the things that I teach in my sound healing workshops and my private consultations is uh, pain release, you know, both physical and emotional pain release. But keep in mind that it's not always uh, pain that we're releasing. You can have a tumor or cancer or uh, a particular illness and there might not be pain associated. It's good to use pain as an example because it shows us how the volume of sound increases or decreases with the level uh, level of pain. But uh, keep in mind that if you want to release something, let's say a, a painful memory from the past, an emotional experience or whatever that might not have actual physical pain, it's the same principles. You still use VVB as I call it, vowels, volume, and breath. The vowel sounds open the voice. Any singer or uh, singing teacher, voice coach knows the power of the vowels but in healing and sound healing it's vitally important so you have the vowels is the first is the V the second V is the volume now you want to raise your volume if you have pain in your body and you just uh, you know if you have a bad pain let's say in your back and you go ow that doesn't really release any pain blase doesn't work with uh, uh, with healing and with sound healing. But, you know, if you, you know, have a pain in your back and you go, ow, and you have an expulse of energy, vowel sound, breath, VVB, vowels, volume, and breath. The prana, the breath, is a very powerful and sacred thing. We take it for granted. You know, it's not like we have to put a lot of thought into it. We breathe naturally every day. But we should certainly appreciate it and use it properly because when you put those together, VVB, vowels, volume, and breath, together with your signature frequency, that's when you can affect the maximum amount of uh, healing, health, and wellness. So let me talk a little bit about your signature frequency and how to discover it because that's the, the title of this presentation, Discovering Your Signature Frequency. Uh, now there's ways to discover the body's frequency by putting very sensitive, high-powered, expensive microphones in and around the body. But that could be quite invasive, having uh, little microphones placed within the various orifices of the body, and it would be quite expensive, not to mention invasive and uncomfortable. So you don't need to do that because the voice represents and reflects what's in your brain, in your brainwave pattern. So a diagnostic voice analysis could be the single most important thing you do in your life because it gives you a very very specific and accurate reading of your frequency that's in your brainwave pattern in your body and this includes the physical body includes the emotional body and the mental or psychological body all these things are present in your voice you know people get a kick out of the fact when they come in for a diagnostic analysis which is best to do when you're in good health so that you have a great great preventative tool to, uh, you know, short circuit any kinds of uh, uh, oncoming illnesses or weaknesses in the body. But, uh, you know, like most things, people wait until they already have something wrong with them physically, they're sick or they have some disease or condition that they're having trouble managing or looking for ways to correct, cure, or heal. And you can still do that with sound healing. It's, it's much easier, of course if you do diagnostic analysis when you're in good health and then apply the proper principles which are easy and inexpensive and then you protect yourself from those long-term uh, illnesses and things that will tend to occur the older and older we get the more we're subject to these you know various imbalances and, and health issues so this is why it's so important to do a diagnostic analysis with a certified you know, sound healer that knows what they're doing. Because the good news is that unlike 25 years ago when I started doing this work and, uh, you know, opened the Sound Therapy Center of Los Angeles, 
and it was a real you know uphill climb. Now it's much different. People you know have studied to some extent the new physics that tells us everything is energy. Uh, there is no such thing as solid matter. Everything is energy vibrating at various frequencies. So people are learning this and understanding this, but they're still not accepting that there's no difference between the word energy, vibration, and sound. So there's various words that mainly are facets of the same diamond that mean the same thing, whether it's uh, energy, vibration, pulsation, sound, frequency, vibration, all these things are basically the same thing. When we measure these vibrations of sound, sound makes a wave. Your voice is a carrier wave of intelligence. It's, it's ca carrying with it very useful and important information, uh, revealing who you are. Now most people aren't going to get that out of your voice unless you're telling them a story or revealing some personal information about yourself. But in a diagnostic analysis, it doesn't matter what you're saying. You know, we ask you about four or five in-depth questions that target different areas of the brain. And then when you respond to the questions into a microphone, I get a digital readout of the information. And I chart it by hand while you're speaking. So a diagnostic voice analysis is, is a lot of fun. It's very inexpensive. Uh, the handful of people around the world that do it generally charge about two or three times the money that I charge and do it a lot quicker. You know, maybe they'll spend 10, 15, 20 minutes doing it, which is really not sufficient time to make sure nothing slips through the cracks, that you get a real accurate representation of somebody's uh, voice, brainwave pattern, and signature frequency, which lies within their brainwave pattern. So it's important to ask enough questions that target different areas of the brain. So for instance, if I ask a person, you know, where they live, what they like, what they do for a living, that sort of thing, that gives me a general pattern. That gives me their general frequency that I chart out by hand and a chart I designed, you know, 25 years ago. And I've been using that chart, you know, ever since. Uh, it's very useful, you know, and has all the frequencies reduced into the musical notes. Now keep in mind, this isn't music therapy. It's very different from musical therapy. It's much more comprehensive and involved, and it's much simpler to understand, and it's uh, much more powerful and comprehensive, in my opinion, and my experience. I mean, I have some music therapy CDs that help people get started, and they can feel a difference in their bodies. It's not just, you know, new age music or something. But my instructional CDs and my workshops and my, you know, sound therapy tone, tonal CDs, those are the things that can help support your body, that you can use them properly, like we would perhaps use, you know, healthy food, sometimes medicine, but medicine can be dangerous. And rather than spend a lot of money and, you know, possibly put your health in jeopardy with drugs, narcotics, and various medications, I mean, just watch the, the commercial on TV about these uh, various uh, uh, drugs, and they tell you about all the the contraindications and all the things that, uh, you know, it makes you want to uh, turn the other way or turn the TV off when they, they give you all these scary things that can happen to you, but then please consult your doctor about this drug, you know. So to avoid all of that and to really get into a natural, holistic, and organic form of healing, you, you kind of have to trust yourself and trust the new physics and some of this information that's out there. You can you know, study the new physics without being a physicist or a scientist and glean a lot from it. Like I said before, there's no such thing as solid matter. Everything is energy, sound, frequency, and vibration. And when we measure these vibrations or these pulsations, that tells us how frequent the vibration is or its frequency. You know, I, when I was a kid, I never even associated the word frequency with how frequent the sound is vibrating. I don't think I understood that till I don't know, maybe uh, 20 years ago or something like that, you know, that I really associate the true meaning of frequency. How frequent is a sound vibrating in your body, in your voice, in your brainwave pattern? This can all be looked at, studied, interpreted, and I can tell the state of a person's health physically, emotionally, vibrationally, you know, within the voice analysis in, you know, 30 minutes. You know, a whole diagnostic voice analysis 
to do it right, you know, the way I do it, it takes about 90 minutes because I like to educate people, I like to give them some information up front about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, what I want them to do and not do, so I explain that up front so they can feel comfortable and understand the process of what's going on. Then the second thing I do is I put, I get a bass line and I put them on the microphone. And the microphone is plugged into a chromatic tuner that gives me a digital readout of the frequencies in the brainwave pattern that is revealed you know, in the voice. And so we do a little test to make sure that the levels are good, we're getting an accurate reading and, and whatnot, and I explain the nature of the questions that I'm going to ask, and so that people can feel comfortable with that. And, um, and then I put you on the microphone. So then the next 20 to 30 minutes, you're speaking into a microphone, asking very simple, answering simple questions. You don't have to sing, you don't have to tone, you don't have to chant, you don't have to make any funny sounds. This research is totally based on the speaking voice, the human voice and its speaking capacity. So all you need to do is speak like you would normally speak and just answer the questions that I ask during the analysis. And while you're doing that, I'm charting by hand uh, in the various columns of the frequencies and octaves where your frequency pattern is because I have a special device that gives me a visual readout of both the frequencies, the tuning, the octaves, all the things that I need. And you don't really need to understand anything about music. Sometimes we'll use a musical term like an octave or a musical note, a frequency or a pitch or something like that. But that's the extent of it. It's not music therapy. It has very little to do with music. But we have to call these frequencies something. Now we could call them ABC, XYZ. We could call them um, Carol, Barbara, John, uh, Jesse and, and uh, Andrea, <laughs> give them any names we wanted to, but since there's a pre-existing musical scale, the chromatic musical scale that we use in the West here in this country, is a, is a very useful tool, just as kind of a grid point, so that we can identify the frequencies. Because music, whether you're a musician and you know anything about music or not, you don't have to, but it is a perfect mathematical formula. In one of my workshops, in my series of sound healing training workshops, one of the workshops focused on regenerative sound, vocal harmonics, and something I created called the Vocal Overtone Spiral, which really can educate you, particularly if you're not you know, trained in music, to understand sound and the, uh, some of the musical terminology we might use to discuss sound, because we, we need to uh, have that uh, you know, grid pattern to see the frequencies uh, and in the chart, and when I interpret your chart for you, you know each frequency, each note, has a correlating physical and emotional uh, aspect to it. Now, if you get my, my book, Sound Medicine, this is all revealed in the book, Sound Medicine. Uh, I also have a laminated chart that has the chart, the correlative healing chart for sound therapy that I've been distributing internationally for 25 years. It's very popular with my distributor. A lot of, uh, you know, health food stores and new age shops and things have this, uh, you know, this chart. But the point is, is that you have a unique signature frequency. It's in your brainwave pattern and it's accessible and visible through the voice and audible through the voice. And so uh, I don't even need to record your voice because I'm doing it live right in front of you. I'm charting out your frequency pattern uh, as you respond and answer to the questions. And I'm looking for any frequencies that are weak or missing in your brainwave pattern. So if they're weak or missing, that's something that we need to focus on strengthening with brainwave entrainment. Now I did a video a couple weeks ago talking about brainwave entrainment and uh, uh, we don't have time to go in depth with it, but let me just say, because it's such an important principle of healing, Entrainment uh, in nature is, can be observed uh, in a lot of different ways. In, you know, in the seasons, uh, in the way they, they took uh, uh, grandfather clocks and experiment the Isaac Bentoff experiment that was done years ago, and set them all for the, at the same time, uh, like a hundred grandfather clocks. Went out to lunch, went out for a couple hours, came back, and every grandfather clock was their pendulum was in sync with each other. 
all hundred clocks, their pendulums were exactly in sync, and every tick was ticking and every talk was talking together, you know, in unison with all these hundred clocks. That's one of the more famous experiments of, of entrainment, and then there's other more uh, subtler, more d domestic experiments, like maybe you've heard, if you're a female at least, how they took five, uh, five or six college girls and put them in the same dormitory to live together, and after two months they all had their menstrual cycles in sync with each other. This is another form of observing entrainment. So it's, I always uh, define entrainment by example like that so people can come to understand it. If you ask me to define uh, entrainment, I can say it's mutual phase locking. But that doesn't teach you anything. And if we're talking about brainwave entrainment, yeah, I could define it as um, mutual phase locking of brainwave patterns. <laughs> but that doesn't teach you anything more. So it's best uh, to learn by example. I've learned. It's the way I learn best, and that's the way I teach in my workshops and private sessions. So uh, an example that I might use for understanding brainwave entrainment is how a song sticks on our head that we've heard a few times on the radio. One of the things you might notice is you didn't hear a song once and it's stuck in your head and you're singing it. It generally takes two, three, four times of hearing something to start to entrain in the brainwave patterns. And so everybody's trying to, you know, make millions of dollars with that hit record and they don't understand it has to do with brainwave entrainment. If you've ever wondered why, why does one song stick in your head and you catch yourself singing it at home or driving in the car, you're humming it or singing it, and other songs go in one ear and out the other. If you ever wondered about that, the key, again, is entrainment. Very important healing principle. So if you're humming a song or a particular song sticks in your head, you can rest assured that some frequency in that song you're in need of. Uh, that's why your brain gravitates toward it, because the brain gravitates towards what it needs, not what you like. You might like a particular kind of music, and maybe you're listening to a different type of music, and that song sticks in your head. Or it might not even be music, it might even be a jingle, like a radio or TV commercial will sometimes stick in our head. Now that's a good example of how it doesn't have to be something that we like with entrainment. If we only followed what we like, we could sometimes get in a lot of trouble because sometimes the foods we like aren't the most healthy sometimes the people we like aren't the most healthy so these are important things to understand because when you understand entrainment you can learn to control your relationships your diet and your foods the people you hang out with your own signature frequency it's endless the power that you're given and how much you can be empowered by understanding and using entrainment and brainwave entrainment in your life I'm just giving you a little brief uh, examples because we don't have time to go into it in depth. Maybe in a future <clears throat> video we'll go <coughs> more deeply and more depth into the entrainment phenomena. But it's real. It's scientifically provable. has been proven. You can research it, Google it, uh, if you like. But, you know, realize that your brain gravitates towards what you need, not what you like. So that's why that jingle or maybe song you don't like or that commercial sticks in your head. You say to yourself, I can't get that stupid commercial or jingle out of my head. Well, <clears throat> that's because there's something that you need, and the brain gravitates to what it needs all the time. Now, then you might be thinking, okay, well, if I listen every day to everything my brain guides me to <laughs> or listens to, uh, is that going to be healing? Well, unfortunately, no, and I'll tell you exactly why. The reason why it's not healing is because you're getting kind of a potpourri uh, in this piece of music. In a song, most songs have at least you know three or four chords. Many songs have four or five or more chords in it. Now there's three, four, three to four notes in each chord. So if you multiply, let's say, you know, four notes by five chords in a song just as an example of an average song, you're talking about 20 different frequencies. Uh, you might be getting all the, all the 12 frequencies in the musical scale, and you might be getting doubled up on some of them, but it's like a sonic stew. And so the brain can't, can't identify and separate one frequency from the other. So you might be getting one or two frequencies 
that kind of vibrationally support you and could potentially be good for you. But the problem is, is it gets drowned out by all the other 10 or 12 or more frequencies that you don't need that kind of cancel them out. So you can't really get benefit from the sonic stew of just listening to everything, listening to all these frequencies. That's another one of the many, many reasons why it's so important to do a diagnostic voice analysis. In fact, I should mention here that I do them by phone. So if you're listening somewhere other than Los Angeles, it's not a problem. You know, the first 10 years, 10, 12 years of my practice, I didn't do it over the phone. I just didn't trust that. I'm very uh, value-oriented and, and try to operate from the highest integrity and do things properly, and I just couldn't, uh, couldn't do it. People had to come in person. But I eventually found, you know, at the improvement in the technology and and uh, phone systems, I found a particular Panasonic phone that reproduces the frequencies remarkably accurate, and it's like no difference from, uh, you know, being in person. I mean, if you're in the Los Angeles area, I would suggest, you know, uh, contacting me at the phone number on my website, wayneperry.com, and, you know, I'm coming in personally. But if you're not in Los Angeles, as I expect most of you out there, around the United States or around the world, wherever you're tuning in from, are not in the immediate area. So it would behoove you to call in. You can call in on a cell phone or any phone and uh, with a prearranged appointment, of course, to do a diagnostic voice analysis. And don't please don't underestimate its value and importance. You know, there's uh, many, many testimonials on my website. You know, I've been doing this for over 25 years. And like I said, it's the most inexpensive and accurate and effective way of using healing and there's this uh, wealth of healing that you have sitting right under your nose and you know I'm not talking about a mustache I'm talking about you know your voice which is sitting right under your your uh, nose and is the most important valuable and powerful healing instrument there is you know people scoff and laugh at that because they haven't experienced it but you know, explore some of the information on my website, explore some of the articles that have been written about me or the five-star reviews on my book, Sound Medicine, uh, or whomever, you know, you can research and, and talk to to get information about sound frequency and vibration because it's out there. But now, you know, like I say, the good news is that people are embracing and recognizing sound healing as a very important and valuable alternative healing modality. Maybe one day it won't be alternative, like Edgar Cayce said, sound will be the medicine of the future. And I probably won't see it in my lifetime that it's mainstream and people, you know, accept it readily. Uh, it's still, you know, not mainstream. It's still an alternative and holistic healing modality, but a very worthwhile one and a very effective one. So I encourage you to explore it, you know, and don't just take my word for it. Talk to whomever you, you're able to uh, get information from and study the research and get with a quality uh, certified sound healer because, as I was starting to say earlier, the good news is that there's more and more sound healers out there. I'm getting emails and you know blogs and messages and phone calls and things from people doing you know sound healing uh, seminars or uh, sound baths and these kind of things. And on one hand, it's wonderful. It's a great tool. I'm glad that it's being embraced and accepted, sound healing. But most of these people, unfortunately, I have to say, are not really sound healers. I mean, I, I'm not judging anyone here. I don't judge anybody or their work. But I also have to be responsible and uh, convey useful and truthful information to the public here and explain that, you know, these sound baths and various sound journeys and things people are doing can be very relaxing and helpful and they can kind of set the stage and kind of prepare you for much deeper sound healing work but in and of itself it's the first of the three R's you know I did a video some weeks back about the three R's and I'll I'll quickly kind of run through that the three types of sound the three R's the first R is relaxing sound and this is what most people are using that are calling themselves sound healers or musicians that are putting out, you know, new age CDs or record albums and they're calling it sound healing music. And, you know, we need to be honest and truthful about these kinds of things because, uh, you know, if somebody's doing some kind of sound healing 
God bless them, you know, I support anybody who's doing good work with integrity. But in most cases, these relaxing sounds are just that. The, the purpose of relaxing sound is to calm and soothe the body, nothing more. Now, it creates a great environment for sound healing to take place, and there's nothing wrong with it. It usually can't hurt you, except if they're artificial sounds. If you're using crystal bowls and bells and tuning forks, didgeridoos, and instruments, some of these uh, acoustic instruments, they can be useful, particularly if you know your signature frequency and can tune them to your signature frequency. You can get some value from them, but you won't get even half the value that you'll get from the voice, from using your voice with toning. That eliminates the middleman, the instrument, and when you start thinking of it as a healing tool and not just as a speaking and singing tool, then you start to realize and understand the third dimension of the voice that most people don't think about to move energy with toning. Uh, like I said earlier, not relying on language or music, uh, using primarily but not limited to vowel sounds. And, um, and when you use those sounds properly with your signature frequency, you can experience phenomenal healing, as I did. I don't want to go over my healing story again. Maybe I'll devote a video to it and how I uh, came out of a 30-day coma where people thought, my friends, my daughter, everybody, you know, thought I was uh, going to gonna die and that I wasn't going to make it, and I did. I was on uh, kidney dialysis for a year. They told me I'd be on dialysis the rest of my life. If I could have gotten them to take me off the machine quicker, I could have healed my kidneys probably in a matter of weeks, but because they wouldn't let me off dialysis, it took me a whole year. I had to wait till the the governing doctor of the dialysis center went on vacation and I had a doctor friend approve one week off the dialysis and in that one week I lowered my creatinine level and they couldn't believe it they were amazed they kept me off dialysis a second week and after the second week I brought my uh, my creatinine level down to a normal you know 1.5 level of, uh, of normalcy and it kind of blew the doctors away and they took me off dialysis and I haven't been on dialysis now in about seven years. And uh, so, you know, this is just one, one or two of the many stories of my healing. I was on oxygen for two and a half years, 24-7. I healed that in, in a matter of hours once I learned the right, you know, frequency and was able to uh, uh, take care of myself. And I was busy taking care of everybody else. And... Uh, I was kind of neglecting myself, and uh, once I did, I, I healed uh, myself, uh, my lungs, got off um, a uh, pulmonary hypertension, and uh, I haven't been on oxygen since 2000, summer 2010. You know, so I'm not going to go on and on and on with all the things uh, that I healed with sound therapy uh, and God's grace, of course. But uh, let, I'll just leave it there and say that I'm just very grateful for the healing experiences that I've had, and I'm happy to tell you more about it if you'd like to call me. I, I try to remain very accessible. My phone number is on my website at wayneperry.com. I have an 800 number if you're out of the, the state of California. If you're in the state of California, you can dial the local number, 323 area code. I, I don't have people answering my phone for me if I'm with a client or I'm busy or I'm out or in a workshop, you know, the uh, message uh, will pick pick up the message and you can leave me a message. I always get back to people uh, and I always call people back and I'm always there to be of service and to assist you and answer your questions and to give you some guidance whether you've experienced uh, sound healing, sound therapy or whether it's new to you and you just want to uh, ask some questions. Uh, when I'm not overwhelmed and busy, I uh, oftentimes offer like a 15-minute free consultation, phone consultation for people so you can call me and inquire about that. So, uh, like I said, wayneperry.com. It's the only wayneperry.com in the world. There's a lot of Wayne Perry's out there. I learned when I started exploring and Googling uh, myself and some other people, and there's a lot of Wayne Perry rappers and business people. There's a lot of Wayne Perry's out there, but I'm the only one at wayneperry.com. You will only get me at wayneperry.com, so keep that in mind if you want to follow up and get some more information that we're not able to cover here in this 
little video today. And before we finish, I'm going to do a, a demonstration. People keep asking me, when am I going to do another demonstration of regenerative sound and vocal harmonics? Well, it's going to come in a few minutes before I end this video. But I want to finish first describing this, uh, the diagnostic voice analysis, because it's so powerful and important to do. And like I said, you can schedule an appointment by phone with me. You know, I pretty much work seven days a week. I try to take a, a Sunday off or so every other Sunday. And the other Sundays, I'm doing workshops every other Sunday in Los Angeles. If in, you're in the immediate area, it's a remarkable experiential workshop, and you can join us for that. But in the meantime, uh, talk, getting back to the uh, diagnostic analysis, once uh, I've asked enough ch questions and filled out your your chart by hand while you're speaking into the microphone, and I've got enough information to accurately interpret the chart and give you useful information on what frequencies are weak and need to be strengthened with brainwave entrainment, and what frequencies you can do some toning to release with release work that I will teach you. Uh, then we complete, you know, we complete the analysis. You put the microphone down. I show you the chart that I created by hand while you were on the microphone, and I interpret for you, and I tell you where you're strong and where you're weak physically, emotionally, vibrationally, answer your questions, which are very important. There's things in your chart that re reveal emotionality from the past and emotionality through the future. And this is very interesting because, uh, you know, some emotions are rooted in the past, like anger and resentment, regret, loss, a broken heart, loss of a loved one. All of these things relate to emotions that are stored in your body and your brainwave pattern that lie in the past. And so to release them and root them out, we can easily do this with sound, but we need to understand the nature of the emotions and the difference between past emotions and future emotions. Those that I just mentioned, anger, resentment, grief, <coughs> broken heart, you know, a loss, uh, these kinds of things are rooted in the past. So it's important to understand that to do an effective emotional release work. Now, other emotions are rooted in the future. Those are emotions like anxiety, worry, fear, um, control issues. See, you know, most of us have control issues. And I was a biggie with this one before my, uh, my transformation and my miraculous uh, healing uh, since, uh, you know, 2011. I've been living in deep, deep gratitude for the the gift of sound healing that was given to me and God's grace that's been with me and I thank God every single day for the miraculous things that he's brought into my life and the healing he's given me uh, you know by all rights I mean I've had two near-death experiences I shouldn't be here talking with you and I assure you I am not on oxygen <laughs> I'm not on crutches or wheelchair and I'm not uh, uh, you know healing anything other than the minor things you know that uh, getting a, a cold sometimes, which I haven't even had that in a couple of years. So, in any case, I encourage you to explore doing a diagnostic voice analysis with a certified sound healer to get the most value uh, from it. I don't know what uh, the handful of people that do this, there's not many, the, the handful that are are usually doctors and they charge upwards of two, three hundred dollars for it and usually don't spend more than 20 or 30 minutes. And they're few and far between and hard to find. I spend a complete 90 minutes with you. After we interpret the chart, I give you a toning lesson on how to release blockages from your brainwave pattern and your signature frequency when you have excess frequency, as well as how to do the entrainment and how to listen to healing tones and sounds to put those weak or missing frequencies back into your brainwave pattern. <coughs> so towards the end of the session, I do all that with you and then teach you this release exercise. I give you an information sheet so you come away with your chart, your healing chart that's personal to you, your uh, signature frequency chart, and I give you an instructional sheet that, that's sort of like a sonic prescription. It tells you how many minutes to listen to specific tones or note frequencies that support you and give you the needed brainwave entrainment but to put those tones and frequencies back in your brainwave pattern that music on the radio isn't going to do for you. You need to be the specificity of the individual frequencies for each person is very important to understand. For anybody that's doing sound healing, you have to 
design it for the individual personally so that that person can experience um, the optimum healing, health, and wellness uh, as a result of these uh, important exercises and any CDs or support materials you get. But, you know, the healing is within you. You know, my book, Sound Medicine, isn't going to heal you, but it's going to give you a lot of tips. In fact, I should probably, I a lot of times, forget to plug the book. And this is the book, Sound Medicine. Uh, you can see, you know, I've done half a dozen or so videos, and I never show the book, and people ask me, how come you never show your book? Or, you know, so, okay, I'm showing the book. That's what it looks like. You can order it on wayneperry.com. You can read some of the five-star reviews about it. The best thing about the book, in my opinion, is it gives you 48 exercises. And there's a separate table of contents just for the exercises, uh, as well as the general uh, table of contents. So once you've read the book thoroughly and really digested all the valuable information in it, you can use the uh, separate table of contents for the exercises and go to the ones that you like most or feel would be the most beneficial for you and target those exercises. I wrote the book not because I thought I was particularly a writer or even a good writer. Uh, you know, I used to be a singer and uh, performer and songwriter, recording artist, a meditation teacher, a voice coach, a lot of things that I've done uh, before I got into the field of sound healing, which I would prefer now to work with uh, helping people with their entrainment rather than helping them with their entertainment. I mean, I still perform. I do concerts. I did a uh, healing tour of Bulgaria, sound healing music tour of uh, Bulgaria uh, some months back, as well as in the Midwest through, uh, you know, uh, what was it, uh, Iowa and Illinois and Wisconsin. But I don't, I don't do this as much as I used to. Back in the 90s, the late 90s, early 2000s, I was traveling all over the world doing this work, doing concerts, sound healing concerts, and workshops in Tokyo, Japan, Osaka, uh, in Italy, England, and in Egypt, and every major city in the United States. And now I'm just kind of taking it easy, a little bit easy. I'm still overwhelmed with work and, and uh, students and, and clients, but I, I'm just not traveling as, as intensively, so I'm available. I'm accessible, you know, here in Los Angeles, and you can reach me by phone, my email, all sound on the website, you know, email is just my name, wayne at wayneperry.com, send me an email. Join the mailing list, too, if you want to get my free newsletter, just put your name in on the website to be on the mailing list, I can assure you your name will be held in the highest uh, uh, privacy, it will never be given to anybody for marketing purposes or anything like that. But anyway, getting back, finishing up on the diagnostic voice analysis. So once we do the analysis and I've answered your questions, I give you your chart, I show you how to use it, I give you an instructional sheet, tell you how many minutes to listen to each frequency, if there's more than one or two or three, whatever it might be, how many minutes to listen. And it's best to do that every day because it's passive. You don't have to stop what you're doing. You can have a plan while you're driving in your car, while you're on the computer, while you're eating or whatever you're doing. So it's very passive. You can't find an easier and less expensive uh, and effective uh, alternative holistic therapy than sound healing, at least in the way that I teach it. And so, uh, and then, like I said, in addition to that daily listing that is passive and you don't have to interrupt or stop anything you're doing, there is an active part of it. You know, and if anybody's going to fall down, that's probably where they'll do it because they sometimes are procrastinators and put off doing their release toning and that's important to do at least twice a week. I don't try to give people too much homework or too much to do because they're um, unlikely to do it a lot of the times and I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say. So I just give you an exercise to do for about 15 minutes twice a week. If you do that toning exercise just like you release energy when you laugh, when you cry, you moan, you groan, you scream, you get excited, whatever those feelings, you're moving energy, you're expressing yourself, you're expressing emotions. Why not contain it, control it, and use it for your upliftment and your better health and wellness <clears throat> by putting those, those sounds into the right uh, pitches, which is easy to do. Like I said, you don't need to know music or any experience because I've got CDs that pretty much do it for you. 
<clears throat> and the book that gives you exercises to do. So it's, like I said, it's a very easy and inexpensive therapy. And then you can use the three sounds accordingly, like the relaxing sounds that many people are doing that you can enjoy in sound baths or in in sessions with some, you know, crystal bowls or some of the the um, instruments out there, didgeridoos. I've got about four or five didgeridoos. I've got bells, bowls, all sorts of toys. And they're they're fun, but they're kind of like icing on the cake. They're not the main focus. The main focus of all sound healing is the human voice. Don't forget that. And don't get intimidated by it. They say people, the number one fear in this country was researched some years back. And before, fear of death and fear of pain was fear of public speaking. So what does that tell you about our culture? <laughs> we're, we're more afraid to use our voice than the fear of death and pain. So that holds true with things like toning and, and speaking, communicating, expressing emotions. So I understand that, and that's why I do a lot of these you know, free presentations, free videos. We have an open house here on the third Thursday of every month in Los Angeles. So I put a lot of stuff out there to try to uh, you know, educate, enlighten people, and hopefully inspire them to explore their signature frequency. That nobody is like you. you. Your own unique signature frequency is not duplicated. I've done twins. I've done husbands and wives. In fact, with husbands and wives, they 99.9% .9 of the time have opposite frequencies. It kind of proves the old adage that opposites attract. I think I've had maybe one, maybe two couples that had similar frequency patterns. Not exactly, but similar, which is very rare. Usually it's the opposites in the frequencies that create attraction and, and what people call chemistry, which relationships are based on. Uh, I, based on, I call it complementary resonance. And I teach a workshop, a sound uh, healing workshop called uh, Sound Relationships. And I teach these principles. So there's, there's too much to teach and to, you know, to to cram into this little uh, video here, but this is just uh, hopefully a wake-up call for some of you out there that may have heard about sound and are <clears throat> been procrastinating about it. And I hope that you'll consider uh, doing a diagnostic voice analysis with a certified uh, sound healer or sound therapist <clears throat> because it'll really serve you well to identify which frequencies are weak and which ones are strong. And this plays on relationships you know, the reason we're drawn to certain people is because they have a lot of frequency that we're weak in. So you want to improve your relationships, do a diagnostic voice and I'll see what frequencies are weak and that you're, you know, potentially codependent and getting those frequencies from another person. People get worried, they ask me, well, if I get all my frequencies strengthened and I'm in balance, then I won't attract anybody, you know, because uh, they're worried they're not going to uh, find the relationship they want when it's it's pretty much the opposite. When you bring your frequencies in a balance with a diagnostic voice analysis and brainwave entrainment, just listening to the right frequencies that support your specific frequency, then you become more integrated and whole and you attract a much higher consciousness, a higher caliber of relationships, not no relationships. You just draw people into your reality that are... are uh, are honest and, and better, uh, more conscious match for you. So, but you know, the proof's in the pudding. You just have to, you know, dive into the water and experience its wetness and, you know, dive into sound and experience it at your own pace. Whatever your experience level is, you don't need any experience to do a diagnostic uh, analysis. That's why I do these, you know, videos and my open house here in LA to answer their questions. And if, oh, and I should mention, I'm going to be doing a webinar. Uh, my first webinar, I'm changing the teleseminar, which is on the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, I've been doing for a couple years now a nationwide teleseminar on the second Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 7 p.m. Central time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Starting on May 9th, next Tuesday, we're switching over to a webinar. Now, I don't know, it might take a little while to, I don't know how that's going to work out. It's going to be like this, but there's going to be there's going to be a new uh, information on the website. It might be up right now. I'm not sure, but if not, it should be up by tomorrow. If it's not up now, my webmaster is uh, in the process of putting the information 
and you can just go on your computer, you don't even have to pick up the phone to go to the webinar, you just put in the dot .com and the access uh, code and you'll be live with me in this webinar. And Again, it's the same time as the teleseminar, at least for now, until I see what's best for people. I'm going to keep it at 5 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesday, May 9th, and of course that's uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So keep an eye out for that, and if you join the mailing list, and send us your email list and join the mailing list, you'll automatically get updates of different events, specials that I sometimes have on products and services, or uh, <clears throat> if I am traveling and I'm in your area, I can let you know when I'll be presenting in your particular town or city. So it's important to uh, you know participate, and I encourage you to, to form a toning group, get together with some other like-minded people that enjoy toning if you've done toning before, if you know experience with some toning, and get some friends together and support each other vibrationally with some toning. I've set up toning groups in cities, Atlanta, Chicago, New York City, Seattle, San Francisco, as well as Los Angeles and other cities. I don't know how many of them are still going. It's hard to keep track on them, but it's something that I like to do. I like to see people supporting themselves and each other with uh, toning groups, you know, sound healing groups. So, and if you're in the L.A. area, you're welcome to come by ours here at, on the third Thursday every month, 7 p.m. on the third Thursday. But anyway, I said that I would, uh, you know, kind of finish up with just uh, giving you an example, uh, again, of the three types of sound. And I already talked about the first R, I talked about the three R's, relaxing sounds. And relaxing sounds, the purpose of which are to calm and soothe the body. And we all need calming and soothing sometimes, so enjoy your bells and bowls and didgeridoos and sound baths and get some relaxing sound when you need it. And then the second R, the second type of sound, is release sounds. Now release sounds, of course, are very different from uh, relaxing sounds because release sounds uh, are when what I gave you examples of earlier, when you moan and you groan and you laugh and you cry and you raise your voice and these kinds of things. So release sounds, of course, are very different from relaxing sounds. And the purpose of release sounds is this. They cleanse the body. That's why, you know, when you scream, when you're hurt, you know, it might not eliminate the pain permanently, but it helps. It helps the process. And eventually it will uh, heal you if you use the voice in tandem with your signature frequency pattern. That's why it's important to really uh, get a diagnostic analysis and get your your chart outlined for your signature frequency, and then you have that you know for the rest of your life. Although I would recommend you know every year or two doing another analysis because your frequencies change, but they don't change that much. People ask me about that, so I should probably mention that your frequency isn't going to be one way today, and the next week it's going to be totally different. Your frequency has developed since birth. And although it's always ever changing, these are very subtle, small changes. The basic general pattern is not going to shift or change that much unless you go in there like I want you to do and use your voice and your toning and some CDs and, and just shift your frequency. That's maybe going to be the title of the next video. Shift your frequency. You know, I don't know. But that's what you want to do. You want to raise your frequency. Shift your frequency to a higher vibration. And so that you're more conscious. You know, we do sonic meditations in every workshop where you can experience how sound and sonic meditation can lift your awareness and lift your consciousness. But anyway, we're running out of time here, so as I said, the second R, the second type of sound, is release sounds that calm and soothe the body. So you might go, ow, or ah, or ooh, you know, whatever, it's personal, but regardless of what culture, what country you live in, it's not going to be that different. You're going to have an expulse of sound, breath, and vowel, whether it's ow or oo or e. You know, it's you know. When I was in Japan, I noticed I bumped into somebody and they said itai, and I said I'm sorry. I didn't mean you know. I didn't know what they were saying. If that was a curse word, they were swearing at me. I didn't know. And then I found out shortly thereafter from my interpreter that that's an expression of pain. Like we go ow, they go itai. I think it, maybe it translates to it hurts or something. I'm not really sure, but I know they say itai when they're in pain in, in Japan. So you learn something every day when you travel and you you know live in the 
this vibrational fast line, lane. And I always tell people, you know, to be green. Explore your greenness. And what I mean by that is when you're green, you grow. You're ripe to learn, you know, and you stay green. When you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, what happens? You rot. You know, and there's a lot of kind of rotten, stinky people out there that think they know it all, you know. And so I try to realize I'm always learning, you know. We, we're, that's what this life's about. You know, if you reach a point where you think you know it all and know you can't learn anything from anybody, you know, that's what I mean by when you're ripe, you rot. You start to get a little little stinky or a little off-center there. So uh, so I, I'm, a, I'm a supporter of that great uh, wise prophet by the name of Kermit. Kermit the Frog says, it ain't easy being green, but it's worth it, you know, because when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Stay open. Stay green. Green power. Anyway, so finishing up, so that the, the three hours, the first hour is relaxing sound. The calm and soothe the body. The third, second hour is release sounds. They generally involve volume when it comes to vocal sounds. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, if you you hurt yourself, you don't go beep beep. It's not a release sound, but ow, ooh, something. You know, using the vowels is a release sound. See, that's how I find out who the aliens are in my workshop. If they're making some beep beep, some kind of weird release sounds, I know. You know, they might not be uh, the uh, humanoid. They may not know who I'm talking to here. But anyway, all kidding aside. The use your release sounds productively and efficiently to cleanse the body. We get in the shower to cleanse the physical body. Make some release sounds when you have some privacy that you're not disturbing anybody or maybe in your car or something. Use VVB, vowels, volume, and breath. And then when you get a diagnostic voice analysis, you add the fourth dimension to it, which is the most powerful, which is the vibration or the pitch of that particular frequency, which we can support you with the right CDs that have vocal harmonics and overtones and regenerative sound on them. So that's what I'm going to end with. I'm going to just close <clears throat> by giving you some regenerative sound. Uh, you know, last Sunday we had our uh, vocal harmonics and overtoning workshop, which teaches you, and I teach it to anybody. Uh, I've taught it to teenagers, I've taught it to seniors. It takes a little practice. But anybody can learn this, and so I'm going to create some uh, the regenerative sound, the third R, after relaxing and releasing. Regenerative sound is truly the only healing sound that exists. And you can create healing sounds actually with an acoustic instrument if you have a diagnostic analysis and you know what your vibrational frequency pattern is. You can actually use an acoustic musical instrument to support yourself. But keep in mind, it's only about a third as powerful as the voice. And it doesn't take a singing voice. Any, your voice is the most powerful instrument for your body. It's more powerful than my voice or anybody else's voice. So that's why don't be shy. Get into using your voice and doing toning and, and uh, using your voice and see where it takes you because it will take you to some wonderful places if you uh, allow yourself to go there. So, okay, so I'm going to do you know, one tone, like toning, moving energy, instead of moaning or groaning, if I went, oh, ooh, you know, that's a tone, that's a single tone, well, I might have shifted the pitch, but if I did one note, ooh, you know, that I can send it through my mouth like that, or I can send it through my nose, which is like humming, but it's still toning, it's, mm, so that's a single tone through my nose, and ah, is a single tone through my mouth, okay, so now I'm going to create an overtone. I'm going to create that fundamental note I'm going to send through my nose. And then I'm going to create a second tone through my mouth. And that would be overtoning. And I'm going to go back and forth between one tone and two tones so that you can clearly, because some people, they don't have a, a, a reference point and know what I'm doing. If they're either hearing one sound or two sounds. So I'm just going to use my finger when I'm doing one tone and two fingers when I'm doing two tones, and then back to one and two, so you can hear the distinction and the difference between the two sounds. So, here we go. Okay, 
Okay, so hopefully you all heard those two tones, the difference between one tone and two tones, which is the difference between toning and overtoning. But, would you like to hear three or four tones simultaneously? <laughs> 